Hey everybody, we're back for some more Disco Elysium. We're gonna try to find out who the cigarette man is by asking this old woman a dumb yeah, question. Uh, I'm looking for Martin Martinez. The cleaning lady smiles a gap tooth smile. When she hears you mention the name, oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here, don't you worry. So I can say, what do you mean? I wasn't joking. No, you don't understand. I'm looking for a real person named Martin Martinez. He told me he's Martin Martinez. P-Brain, someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez is a name for anyone from Martinez, like Jim Jamrock or Raoul Revacol. Oops, you really didn't get the joke there. I thought it was obvious. He stopped before he offends you. Anyway, officer, we don't have the witness's name. How about a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair and skinny build, a smoker on the balcony? Know where he lives? Yes, yes, I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? She looks at the other end of the hallway. Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? No trouble. I just want to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk. The cleaning lady starts laughing, but it turns into a violent coughing spasm. She squeezes her broom, trying to catch her breath. He lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. She points east. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. He turns to you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony and see if he's home. All right. So, I don't remember how to get to the balcony. Never. Eat. East is this way. Off we go. On the adventure of a lifetime. Not this room. Okay. I believe we want to go in through. That's the exit, because it says exit. That says balcony. I am figuring everything out. I guess you could say this murder has already been solved. <laughs> oh God, I have no idea what I'm doing. Eh, just taking this time to load, that's okay. Do what you need to do. All right, we're looking for room 28. Up here, go faster. Put a little spring in your step, young man. 28. Boom. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock. No one answers. Looks like the young man we're looking for isn't home. I think our best chance is to catch him in this evening. He looks around, taking in the cold spring air. It is currently 4.04. Do you know where your goods are? Sounds good. Tomorrow, 21 o'clock. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 2100? Sounds good? Sure, sounds good. Tomorrow, 2100. Tomorrow, 2100, right here, apartment 28. He writes it down in his little notebook. Good, let's go. And it's written down in my little notebook. Easy. Damn, turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry, you'll get him. Remember, tomorrow, he's probably gone for today. All right, okay. So then we don't need to worry about that at all. Is there anything we missed up here? I want those bottles. Okay. So I think I'm gonna go do something that in my mind, I perceive as stupid. That's what I'm gonna do right now. We're gonna go do something that's potentially incredibly stupid, but boy oh boy do I wanna do it. <clears throat> what is that you ask? Well, you're about to find out, so thank you for asking. It's a good day to ask questions. Look at this cute little birdhouse, okay. I have to remember how to get in here. All right, I remembered how to get in there. Odds are I will probably forget though. Oi. Oh, is there something in this garbage? Oh, that's one way. He just like fucking hangs himself over the, the rail. Hey, partner, do you mind holding my shoes? What the fuck is this? <clears throat> you can go faster. Okay, go faster. What do we got here? The splatter bullet holes line the wall. The sight of bullet holes stirs something in you, making you forget the lieutenant's surname. Kim, look. Bullet holes. Where? He looks around. Point at the chips in the wall. Someone has been shot. Uh, we should solve it. There? He looks at the wall. Those are old. What do you mean old? These bullets were filed during the revolution over half a century ago. They do not warrant investigation. 
Oh, okay, what can you tell me about the revolution? Not much, I don't have a fresh perspective on it. Shall we go? Well, we call that lore. What the heck did I pick up? I don't know. <clears throat> well, that's enough world building. Let's go do that stupid thing. We're going to tell our partner to shoot the body off the tree. That's right, baby. Take all. That's money if I've ever seen it. <clears throat> Let's do it. Oh. Talk about getting him down. Shoot him down. He breathes out heavily. Oh yeah, do it. Boom. I'll blow his head off. Take it, take the shot. Unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops the paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring sticks, and gives the cartridge five tucks. He then steps back and assumes the felt OS position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches, his finger on the trigger, say nothing. He's gonna fucking... The kid's voice is drowned in a shrill blast that opens up the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as Lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. He feels bad about it, about his eyes mostly. Just having bad eyesight, probably from a young age. Whenever you do, do not console him. Fucking idiot. He says something I don't know how to say. Wow, Kuno, you're a jerk. I'm excited for when I found out about your tragic backstory. What now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. All right, that's it. We gotta go to the harbor. Okay, he looks at the cargo belt. They do have the tools and the men, and since it looks like they put him up there, yeah, they can get him down too. He sighs, okay, let's do it the lousy, dangerous way. Let's get to it then. Let's go! Do, 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 do. I'm a blue man with my shitty sunglasses. <laughs> oh, what a nightmare I am. Okay, well, let's look in here. Where's our bottles? It's probably in our bag, right? It probably just says. Wow, look at that. Chain cutters, a flashlight. Let's go. Why am I going in there? Good question. I was going to talk about my gun. I'm trying to just do every case at once. That's how we work in this city. In Martinez, in Revecol, in Disco Elysium, mon ami, ah, je poupou. Insert bottles. All right. Ooh, don't forget to click the orbs around your head. They have surprises. Wow. What a lucky guy I am. Okay, we have to get to the harbor. We have to get to the other side. Excuse me, excuse me. Can you help me down with the body? Let's talk to this guy again. Right to work. Right to work. I want to get. Shame on you. Calm down. I want to get into the harbor. Have funny snorts. Union shits are full on strike. Do you think they're going to let you through the gates? You're trying to meet their fat boss. I'm interviewing people about a murder behind the hostel cafeteria there. I know nothing about a murder. His reply is snappy and terse. The mention of a killing sends a barely noticeable shiver of tenseness through him. Interesting. Hmm. Absolutely nothing. Wouldn't put it past these harbor bugs. They'd do anything to stay alive. He again shakes his large fist and turns back to you. It's shameful. Cops doing nothing. You should bring back up, open the gates for us. Blockading gainful employment for workers is a crime. This really isn't my area of expertise. We're not picking a side in this just yet, sir. Pity. He turns around and bells at the gates. Let us work. All right, I'm just going to leave now. See ya, buddy. Let's knock. Knock on the gate. It says, Cree. All right, we want to go up here. All right, let's go back to this guy. Measure head, how's it going? Long time no see. Oh, what's this? Oh, good, good, good. 
Hey, Measurehead, how is it going? Last we saw, your face was being superseded by the Semini. Alright. You're right about all this. Now I need you to help me get the corpse down from the tree. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Simenan Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. I'm starting to think that there's a carbon monoxide leak in all of Martinez. The walls will be lined with bottles of all wool. Your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art and your microcephalics cult. serve the union don't you aren't they white aren't they white don't be vulgar white or not has got little to do with this the race enigma runs much deeper than that he turns his eyes towards the harmer seemingly bored with you there must be some friction there he's keeping it well hidden however yeah but you still serve them how does that factor into your life Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital something your race, naivistic communists, never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. Hello, no communist. Communism is pretty cool. Individual is my jam. My jam is a mysterious fourth thing. Enough of this. Individualism is my jam. Jam, individualism, you have gotten these ideas from degenerate youth culture, have you not? You have picked them up from rock and roll songs. I've gotten it from disco, actually. Offshoots of the Seminese people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race, but what is done is done. I'm not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural, cultural victory of the Seminese race. Huh, wonderful. I need to enter the harbor now. Or you could take the body down yourself. Wonderful, I need to enter the harbor now. I don't really know who the Seminese are. I've recently experienced head trauma. Okay, I'll ask. Who are the Seminese? Let's do that. Let's find some more backstory. The South Island Race, Haplogroup A4A. We are the rightful masters of the Insulindian Archipelago. We descend from the uh, Aeropagites of the ancient Perkinarasis and arrived here 4,000 years ago, millennia before you. Julie just texted me. Uh, we are the future. That is all you need to know. So you were born and raised on the islands before you moved to Revacol. I am a descendant. The narrow streets of the Ullen Beer are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Seminese women walk to the Grey Mass on Ile de Fantôme, waiting on immaculate conception from the Pale. Understood. Good. What are those tattoos supposed to mean? Racists are generally not very good examples of their race. He gestures towards the lorry men down the street. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features uh, this should dispel any doubt. You're right. I'm going to just say nothing. Your silence portrays your inferiority. You do not have a reply. You should enter a deep race slumber. Perhaps in 4,000 years, there is a need for servile homunculi homunculus. Yeah. He's right. I think my theory is right. I think there is, uh, let's try to subscribe to his advanced race theory. Oh, it's a failure. Go ahead. Don't be shy. No, I better not say anything. All right. Know anything about this mug? Show him the mug. He does not show much plans for the object. Put this into the trash lately. Stop showing me your pathetic cup. I have no interest in it. Does he strike you as the kind of man who puts mugs in the trash? All right. Wouldn't that be the fucking thing of the century, if we can get that? <sighs> I just want to press that button. All right, well. Measure head, go measure head. You're the future of the world, measure head. All right, we're just going to keep walking around. We're going to just do some exploring, some poking. Didn't mean to touch you, sir. I'm so sorry. I'm wondering, man. How can I help you? Nah, we're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. 
Let me down here, please. I don't know where I'm gonna sleep tonight. I'm gonna freeze to death on the streets. I don't know where I'm gonna sleep tonight, but it's not gonna be so good. Do you have anything to say to me, lady? Hello again, officer. How are things? I gotta go. See ya. Thank you for being one of the few kind people in this city. Everyone is a goddamn monster. Man, Measurehead is in, you know, you know, he's, he's something all right. I am Measurehead. Who the fuck are you? You're new. You look like Northern Lion. It's all about money, you know? You gotta spend money to make money. Yo, money is what really, oh, no, all right, sure. Oh, can we go into the kitchen? Oh, we lost that thought. I would have liked to... Here we go. The soft purr of electric juicer comes from the kitchen. Someone is working. And that person is you. You might not know about the garbage. Oi, mate, talk to me. A thin man is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you step in, he nods towards the table, says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out of it are Garassi and Quebec. It must be his name. Grassi, Grassi Quebec. Sounds representative. It's a failure. Don't trust that one. I'm gonna say hello, sir. I got time for a few questions. The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. You got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. Stay masculine, buddy. <sighs> Meal appeal drawn to color. Blue is for mystery. I wonder where this door leads. You do? It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? Uh, I'm drawn to its cobalt blue. It is quite pretty. I suppose we could look into it as a side investigation. Yes, a mini side investigation. He looks at you, then at his door. Gart is the person to talk about, the manager. All right, let's go talk to you. Hey, buddy! I know you hate me, but who who likes me in this fucking city? Can I help you? Uh, I've seen something here at the Whirling Gart. I think I need to talk to about. He rolls his eyes. What thing? I saw a sign that said the mess hall is reserved for the Union. I did, guess I did see that. Yes, not the whole damn Union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. He tosses his head in disdain. They come here in the evenings, the dumb unruly types think they're big shit, but they're good customers, they place orders and always pay on time. He hates the union, but grudgingly recognizes its power over him, so he's directing his frustration at you instead. Retaliate. Let it go. And the lieutenant gives you a meaningful nod. We should find out who this loud faction is occupying the booth. Loudness means talkative and we need info. How do we find them? We don't. We wait till they show up. Sooner, sooner or later, he looks towards the booth. Men are hungry, even men on strike. You glance at the clock with the wall behind the manager. It's after six o'clock. The sign said reserve starting at six o'clock. Why isn't anyone in the mess hall? Hold your peace. Best not to nitpick. There's a mysterious blue door. Oh yes, that door. There's nothing mysterious about it. It's just a door. Do you know what's behind it? Do you have... No, I don't have a key. I don't know how to get there. And I don't care either. It's not like I've been wondering about it for 10 years. It's just a fritty warehouse, probably. Or some boring storage space with a bunch of old junk and dust. Junk and dust. He runs his finger on across the counter to check for dirt. He's intended to maintain an air of indifference. It's absolutely not convincing. I think you'd like to know what's back there. Fine, okay, a little, he shrugs. But my job doesn't leave me time wonder for wondering about one locked door and one cafeteria as I manage. So I haven't opened it. I have cleaned the whole place a hundred times over, though, after the animals, and I haven't found a key. So good luck with that. There's something else I want to ask about. What? Ah, bye. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, bye. It's just another game for two. I don't know what the fuck I should do. I go crazy, but it ain't no lie. Hello again, sweetie. Bye. I think I'm going to go up here again. 
Because there was that one girl who I talked to who has a room here. I don't remember if I knocked on her door. I might have. I might have knocked on her door. Knock again. Try the handle. Oh, okay. By her hand. Okay, so that is the door. Oh! You should pick that fat, juicy cigarette butt from the tray, light it up, and smoke the living shit out of it. Am I a smoker? Who knows what you are? A monster? A murderer? The gnome of Jeroma? You feel like a smoker, especially when you look at that juicy, succulent, seductive cigarette stub. Still smoldering deliciously. But you broke it at the filter. I can't smoke that. How very astute of you. This renders it ineffectual. You should look for a whole cigarette, or better yet, an entire pack. Strike that. A carton. Make sure they're all healthy and able-bodied, then smoke them all. This idea seems to make your neck expand. Suddenly, the garish tie feels very snug. Or you can not do that. No one is making it. I should not not do that. I should enthusiastic. Yes, I should do that. I should enthusiastically do that. I should not not do that. I'll make it priority one or, well, I'll think about it. Good. Thinking about yummy cigarettes in your mouth is the next best thing. Make sure you think about the juicy sticks of tobacco all the time, though. It doesn't count if it's not all the time. And when you're done thinking about them, graduate to getting them. Find smokes and smoke them. Plus, smoking them gives massive bonuses. I don't trust my brain. All right. Okay. Find a way. Find out something you can box. Find smokes and smoke them. All right. Oh, is that a lot? That's a lot of money in my room, isn't it? Don't mind me. Just, uh... Taking some bottles, making some money. You know how it is. Why does the, the lamp still have a... Sorry, yeah, the, the ceiling fan has something I can interact with. There, I'm a good cop, I'm cleaning up my room. Oh. All right, I forgot about that. Well, let's see if there's any cans on the balcony. Because that's just the kind of guy we are today. We're caring about one thing, and that is cleaning up our mess. I got to text Julie, but I'm waiting for this video to be over. All right. Nothing out here. Oh, hello. The smell of the sea makes you dizzy. See ya. Okay. One thing I do really like about this game is that you truly are placed in the position as of a, of a detective who doesn't know fucking anything. Which I, and I think it really succeeds with that. I think the other thing that's really cool... Um is that the dialogue's incredible. The writing in this game is interstellar. And I mean that it's much better than the film Interstellar. But um, it's very overwhelming, which I also do kind of like. I do like that I don't know what I'm doing or that I don't feel like I'm doing anything right. I think that's very important to making this game compelling. Because if I felt like I was doing everything and that everything was getting solved instantaneously, I would feel as though I was... I feel as the, the game isn't worth the time. But right now, I feel like the game is incredibly worth the time. Hello, what are you? Electronic doorbell. Bell. Ball. An old call box with a matrix of push buttons lists all the companies in the East Delta Commerce Center. Holy shit. Huh. <sighs> Oh my god. Holy hell, that's an actual nightmare. It looks like this thing's broken, though, so... Alright, well, we have a white check in here. I believe it's a white check to convince her that we can exercise the evil spirits that are living within her bookshoppy. A lot of things to interact with. Let's explore this place a bit. I like the yellow curtain, though. Crack. 
Prime books, Albert Einstein books. Look at the display of books. Boom, I don't care. I don't, no, stop, let me out of this. All right, I don't want to talk about books. I do want to talk to you. All right, let's try again. Let's, well, first we're gonna make sure it's a white check. Hello again, esteemed officer. And welcome to Crime, Romance, cool. and Biographies of Famous People. Woo! No, shopkeeper has crossed her arms. The tenant looks at you waiting to see where this is going. You got this, just go with it. Crime Bros. We're called the Crime Bros. Wait, that's it? I don't want to say that. That's so funny. No, it's really stupid. Farewell for now, book peddler. We'll be back in the future. <clears throat> what that is and what I do in the meantime, I have no idea. All right, what do you have to say for yourself, young lady? Hello again, sir. Are you interested in a new and exciting book this time? Is it okay if I ask you some okay, questions? Sir. I'll try to answer any questions you have. I hope they're about books. What's your name? My name is Annette, sir. My mom, her name is Pétain. She owns the bookstore. <clears throat> She's inside minding the register or organizing the stock. The girl gazes at the window then suddenly jolts her eyes wide as if recalling something. Feel free to step in and browse our wares. And you're standing out here in the cold because... I'm signaling that the store is open, she nods eagerly. Otherwise, people might not know. They'd miss out on the crime, romance, and biographies of famous people. This sounds like child abuse. A sudden gush of wind turns the pages of the books on the counter. She covers her face, smiling, but she's cold. You're cold. Can I help in some way? Kind of you to, kind of you to offer, sir. She doesn't know what else to say. What could you do to help her, anyway? <clears throat> mm. Pat her head. Thank you, sir. All right, bye. Okay. What an exciting world we have. Okay. So I remember them saying something about the fishing village. Oh, auto save alert. There's a fishing village down south, but I remember that I couldn't go this way. Because this thing's closed or something to that effect. Who the fuck are you again? You're just watching this thing. Yeah, he's just eating salami. Like a little salami boy. That's money. I don't remember if I came in here. Oh my god, there's everything in here. It's not often that I see officers of the RCM in my pawn shop. What can I do for you? His courtesy is not insincere, but he prefers being alone with his projector, but just watching the movement of light across the walls of the shop. Sorry, I feel like I'm interrupting. Oh no, not at all. I, oh, I guess I haven't had many customers lately. RCM or otherwise. Who are your customers usually? All kinds of people come through here. Locals, travelers, people looking for a deal, people looking for a keepsake, people who are terminally bored. As you can see, I have a wide selection of goods for everyone to choose from. Quite the collection it indeed. Keeps me entertained. His attention is drawn once more to the play of light and shadow on the walls behind you. Entertain, he might be high. If he is, on what? If Roy is high? And if yes, then what is he on? Failure. Okay, he definitely is high. Whatever it is, you've probably done it and the other things besides, but you can't cut through the jumble of sensations to get the answer. All right. Oh, I guess I guess. Hello again. By the way, do you have Can any I guns like you? the ones carried by cops? 
Someone else came here earlier today asking the same question. I promptly sold her the gun you pawned a couple days back. I pawned my gun? Oh my god, that's embarrassing. <clears throat> At least I know how I lost my sidearm. Let's talk about something else. Uh, you might be able to aid our investigation. I doubt it, but I can have answers. But I can try to answer any questions you have. Know anything about the recent hanging? I do my best to keep my distance from all manner of butchery. Bad for business, bad for everyone. Actually, that's all I've got. Uh, I wanted to ask you about my missing gun. I sold you my gun. You, uh... With Kimir too, that just sounded really, really bad. You were adamant about getting rid of it, officer, he states. Said you were undeserving of a service weapon of the Rebecal Citizens Militia. And I don't like keeping guns around the shop for long, off the charts, photon emissions. The unhealthy kind. He's not telling you the whole story. It seems he's trying to spare you. I feel like there's something you're not telling me. He looks away. You weren't quite yourself, officer. What was that like? You were very distraught. You said the gun was a threat to your life and that you can't trust yourself with it tonight and you need the money. When I said that I don't normally buy firearms, you put the gun barrel in your mouth and sort of sucked on it. Then I agreed to take it. You sucked on a gun. Good, good, very normal. I'm sorry I had to see me that state. We don't have to talk about it further. No apologies necessary, officer. Thank you for the review. Let's talk about something else. No, no, let's buy her policeman too. She didn't seem like a policeman, though she kept referring to herself as a pig, which was odd. I found her interesting and a bit obsessive, but I was just happy to get rid of it and her. Tooth were told she was terrifying. Right, so let me get this straight. Lieutenant turns to you. You sold your sidearm issued by the citizen militia, and now a civilian is running around the streets of Martinez with it. Miraculously, his face does not reveal what's happening inside. I don't like it either. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I sold my gun. He sighs. Yeah, it's not good. I do hope we manage to clean this mess up somehow while also keeping our focus on the murder investigation. This mess? He means your mess. Any idea where I can find this buyer? My apologies, officer, but I have no idea where she was coming or where she went. I need all in a haystack. There's nothing you can do about it now. We'll just have to hope you luck upon her somehow. Thanks for the review. Let's talk about it later. Goodbye. Okay, um, so... Hello. Wait, there are copo types? You guess? What's yours? Oh, copo types. Cool cop? No, you're the sorry cop, the cop who's sorriest. Let's make it official then, shall we? Huge lack of enthusiasm, enthusiasm going on here. You know? I'm actually not sorry. No, you don't. Come on. You'll be back to saying sorry in two minutes. Stop wasting time and begin the repentance. No, I'm really not sorry. Fuck off. Okay, I'm sorry. Opt in. Thought gains. Uh, righteous self critique Of course you are. It's okay. See if you can get something out of this, like info. Or maybe every time you say you're sorry, you get a million bucks. That won't happen. Easy success. Okay, so we're just going to browse around in here quickly. Some kind of machine. I imagine all this stuff is just like... Yeah, this is pretty... This is not interesting to me. So there was one character who would routinely call me a pig. So that's what I'm thinking of going. I don't have any thought clouds, do I? Uh, we're gonna solve these ones soon though, in 26 minutes, so that's sweet. So we're just gonna walk to her today. And then that's what we're gonna call this video. But yeah, I don't know if this is the right choice. Oh, hello, is there cans in here? Pat the box. The box seems happy. Eat shit pig fucked by the con and St. G with a crown of scrabbled on it. Genie is a whore and capacity. Mailbox. I feel you, mail collection box. The mail collection box seems cathartic, thankful even, so do you. You shudder, then you swallow. Leave. Poor guy. All right. So... The only person I can think off the top of my head who has routinely called me pig is her. So, let's just talk to her to see if anything else has opened up. Shall we? Yes, we shall, because I'm in control of this video and I think I'm actually just 
it's gonna, this is gonna be an extra long video. This one's gonna be just a little bit longer than normal. So, just so everyone knows that's how it's gonna be. So if you're thinking maybe this is only a 30 minute video and I could go get a sandwich or something, this isn't the time to do that. No, no, no. All right, little lady, how's it going? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? Is that bed in the coal room yours? Oh, not only have you found my address, you discovered my biggest secret. I'm a coal miner. Coal miner. It's not the nicest place, but I guess I'll have to do. It doesn't have to do anything at all. Nothing does. She looks at the paint dripping on the wall. Like me. Right now, I'm doing nothing at all. Cool. Don't you have a real home? Does anyone in a city like this? She replies wistfully looking around. Cool, I have other questions. You keep looking out the side. What are you looking at? She turns her head to face the coast and nods disdainfully towards Joyce, performing maintenance on her boat. Looks like she's actually looking into her coffee, coffee mug. Hatred disgusts to be able to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The one on the boat does not notice her staring. She hisses. That is on horror. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. You mean Joyce? On a first name basis with her, are we? Piggy's moving up in the world. Hold on. What's a zone? It's where they grow whores like her and their whore men. Wild and negativity. Have you got a crush on her? Aching for an opportunity to defend her honor? Bye, Cindy. I'm gonna go look in your room. <sighs> Is my gun in here? No, I guess my read was wrong. But that's okay. We took risks. We, oh, there's a little kitty cat drawn on the pillow. That's so cute. Cute, super cute. I'll see you guys in the next episode. Have a good one. And as always, GG's.